Hi guys, welcome back to a page in the chapter or welcome if you are new here. My name is Paige, I like to read a lot of books and then talk about them here on this channel for you guys to hopefully enjoy. And today we're judging books by their covers. So this is a little game that I came up with, a little kind of reviewing game that just kind of came to me one time and it's rainy and horrible outside and I haven't vlogged so this just seems like a good video to do today. The premise of this video is that I will show you a book cover, I will discuss whether I like the book cover or not and then I will tell you whether you should judge the book by its cover or not and that could either be whether you should judge the book by its cover in terms of does the cover represent the content of the book or we could judge it based on if it's a really nice cover but a really bad book or a really bad cover and a really good book you know like should you judge it that way so that's what we're doing today it's a weird idea I don't know if anyone else has ever done this before I think this could work really well as a drinking game but it's 3 p.m on a rainy Tuesday and I'm alone so I don't really want to get drunk right now but I think this could work well as a drinking game if you guys like the sound of this video and you want to stick around and see more why not hit that big red subscribe button down below and stay tuned for future content I upload on a Wednesday and a Friday every single week so there is no short of bookish content here. You guys can also check me out on Instagram and Twitter. Don't feel obligated but this is just a really easy place to control more of the content because I do a lot of behind the scenes stuff. I ask you guys for advice on thumbnails, what book to read next, what book to review etc etc. So you guys can kind of control the content a little bit more. I'm talking very fast, I'm sorry I've like just necked a Diet Coke because I'm tired. Thank you very much for clicking on this video and I hope that you enjoyed and now let's go judge some books by their covers. The first book that I would like to talk about that I picked because my boyfriend said the cover of this book was very cool and that is The Unexpected Everything by Morgan Matson. This book has dogs on the cover. The hardback underneath the dust jacket is a bright yellow that brings me a huge amount of joy. I really like this cover. I think it is the perfect cover for a YA contemporary. I think it suits Morgan Matson's writing style very very well. It's very light and bright and it usually focuses on just one character and how she experiences the world. This book does that and it gives you a glimpse into like the subplot of the book which is that she's a dog walker for the summer because all of her other plans fall through. It is about our main character Andy learning to stop being so in control of her life and just go with it and see what happens. And I think this bright, summery, happy cover really reflects the nature of the book. So in that sense, yes, you should judge it by its cover. Like the dog aspect is a very big element of this book. There's also an absolutely massive Great Pyrenees on this cover and, and a Great Pyrenees is the central dog in this plot line. So like, you should judge it by its cover. However, the book isn't as happy as the cover makes it out to be and the bright yellow book makes it out to be. It is more of a hopeful book I would say than a happy book. Like the book doesn't have a traditionally happy ending. I'd say it's just more hopeful so maybe the super bright cover isn't ideal for this book. I don't know. You'll have to let me know down in the comments what you think. To rate this book out of representation I would give it a four stars. I think the cover does really represent the content of the book well in terms of dogs etc. I just don't know if it's slightly too happy but I can see from a marketing perspective why they would go with this and then in terms of whether I like the book or I like the cover and I feel like my like for the cover matches my like for the book I will give it a five out of five stars because I love this cover and I love the content so overall the unexpected everything gets a nine out of ten stars so the answer is yes you should judge this book by its cover and you should go read it the next book on my list is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue now this has two covers so we'll discuss the Waterstones edition just because this is the edition that I have. In terms of do I love this book cover, I do. I do love this book cover. I think it is beautiful to look at. I think it just looks very nice on the shelf. I don't love that V.E. Schwab's name is bigger than the actual title, but I guess that makes sense because V.E. Schwab is such a big author that you're most likely to just pick up the book because it's hers. But that's really my only complaint in terms of the aesthetics of the book. I think it's absolutely beautiful. I do have some qualms with the book in terms of representation though. I think both covers don't really represent what the book is about. One is floral and one has stars. I don't really understand what these have to do with a main character, Addie LaRue, who is immortal but the catch is that no one remembers her until one day someone does remember her. Like I, I don't really understand what it has to do with it. So in terms of content, eh. That being said though, these covers do really capture this like magical cozy vibe 
that the book gives off so i think vibe wise they give off the right vibe the vibes of the content match the vibes of the cover if i am making any sense right now so in terms of do i like this cover and do i like this book a five out of five stars again i adore this book i think these covers are absolutely beautiful and i would say yes judge the book on its cover for that aspect but in terms of representation of the cover and representation in the book i would give it a two out of five stars and i would say don't judge this book by its cover so i don't know you guys will have to be the decider on this one because technically it only gets a seven out of ten which i would it's more than half so let's say yes judge this book by its cover but be wary that the content has nothing to do with the front cover at all the next book is the royal assassin trilogy by robin hobb in terms of representation of this cover it perfectly represents what this story is about these covers are all very medieval and the farseer trilogy is about a medieval assassin living at court these two things match up perfectly i also just i do think that these covers are absolutely beautiful i think they look so nice next to each other on the shelf they're just covers that immediately draw you in and make you want to buy this book like you see these covers and you're like this is a me medieval fantasy and they're so pretty that you just have to pick them up so representation wise i would give them a six out of five stars if i could but i can't so it's five out of five stars all the way for representation here like robin hobbs publishing team absolutely smashed it with these i know that the covers that i'm showing are not the original covers or they might be the uk covers i don't know i know that i've seen people with different covers for the farsi trilogy and it is a good thing that they like rebranded these because these these covers fit so much better now the bit that i'm not looking forward to i dnf'd this series i didn't love it as much as everyone on booktube seems to i absolutely adored the first book i really did i thought this was going to be like a new favorite series it pulled me out of a reading slump i was like so into it and invested and then i read the second book and there is just a character in these books who becomes so so irritating in the second book like i would actually punch her if she existed like i just wanted to reach into the book and shake our main character for wanting to spend time with her and then like murder her and like pretend it was an assassin of some kind so i could get away with it like i hated her so much and she became such a big character that it ruined the whole experience for me like i was just frustrated reading it i haven't read the last book because i've decided to, de to dnf it but i'm pretty sure i know like where it's going i'm pretty sure i've predicted everything that was left unclear at the end of the second book so yes i absolutely love these covers but i love the covers 10 times more than i love the book i think these covers are so much better than the content of the book so in terms of book covers reflecting content it's a one out of five stars for these which means they only get a six out of ten stars overall and i would say no don't judge these books by their covers because the covers are too good the covers are the best part of these whole books and i will die on this hill That would have been so much cooler if this was alcohol, but hey ho. I'm already dreading talking about this next book, but it needs to be said. The next book that we're gonna rate is Cersei by Madeline Miller. I've been very clear about my thoughts on Madeline Miller so far. Let's let's do the cover. Okay, so in terms of representation, this book doesn't give you much. I'm gonna be discussing the cover that I have. I have this cover. We're gonna be discussing this one. This cover really doesn't give much away. It's just very floral and simple. Yes, this book has a very big natural element, so I can see why they went with the floral and like the rich gold foil to like represent a more godly status. I can kind of see the decision making behind this book, but it doesn't really tell you anything about what the book's about. But when you see it on your bookshelf or you see it in a bookstore you can assume that it's probably about greek mythology just a from the name and b from just from how like extravagant and godly this book looks i'm gonna go straight down the middle and then give it the benefit of the doubt for the gold foil and the the, na the natural elements and give this a three out of five stars for representation i don't think it's a bad cover you don't look at this book and go 
yes, this matches exactly what the story is about in the way that you did with the unexpected everything. However, that being said, the other cover of Cersei that I have seen does fit the story much more. Like the other version of story you can very clearly tell is Greek and Greek mythology based. And I think it's a better representation of the book, although I do think it is less pretty. So do with that what you will. And then much in the same way as the Royal Assassin, I think this cover is too good for the book. I think the other, other cover, they would even out. In terms of cover to how much I like the book, that would, that would be better. I would give it a higher rating. But with this cover, it, it's too pretty for the book. I really did not enjoy this book very much at all. I do plan on giving it a reread sometime soon just to like double check just to see if I really didn't enjoy it. I think my biggest issue with Cersei was that I thought it would be very plot driven. It is not. It is essentially just a very long character study of Cersei and it doesn't diverge much from the original Greek myths and that kind of bugged me. I would have liked to have seen some creativity in it that I didn't get. Yeah again I would have to give this a two stars in terms of cover enjoyment to book enjoyment because again the cover is just too good for this plot. I said what I said, you should most definitely not judge this book by its cover. The cover is far too good to be true and Cersei only gets a 5 out of 10 stars. Final book that I would like to discuss is the Silence of the Girls by Pat Barker. And again, I have seen alternative covers for this, but we are going to discuss the cover that I have. This is just straight up awful. Like, I put off reading this book for so long because the cover is just disgusting. I said what I said. This cover does not represent anything in this book at all. I would not say this is a very blue book. I don't think the blue theme works very well. I don't understand the whole silk thing on the front cover other than the fact that it's Grecian. I do like the fact that it's like a woman's body because this book is a very feminist retelling of the Trojan War or from the perspective of the women who experienced it and had their voices completely silenced in this narrative. So that really works in its favour. But I just think there's a lot more they could have done with this. And then the alternative cover that I have seen is much much better. It really does get across that it's a war setting. I think the reds work better but I still don't think they're capturing the full potential of this book. I don't look at this book cover and go that is a good book you know? Is it just really difficult with mythology retellings? Is, is, is that the issue? I don't know there's just this blue cover specifically is absolutely atrocious. In terms of like cover to story content I would give it a three stars. I do like the Grecian woman on the front. I just, you have to look very closely to tell that she's a Grecian woman otherwise it just looks like silk blowing and that makes no sense. So maybe actually we're gonna drop it, we'll drop it down to 2.5 stars for that. In terms of content this, this cover is a bit of a miss. In terms of likeness I think it's fairly obvious from what I've said that I hate this cover. I think it's awful. They could have done this story so much more justice. Like I just, I did not pick it up because I thought that it was not a good book. This cover just looks like some like cheaply produced, not properly published book that you assume is not properly edited or a lot of work has really gone into at all. However, this was a five star read, one of my favourite reads of this entire month. Like if you have not read this book yet, despite the cover, I would highly, highly recommend it. This book restored my faith in Greek myth retellings after the mess that was Circe and the Song of Achilles. So I highly, Highly recommend it. And for that note, I have if I could give this a minus star, then I would, but I won't. So I'm giving this literally one star for how badly the disconnect between the cover and the story is. Like a five star book has like a one star cover. Mm -mm, can't be having that. 3.5 stars overall, which is a shame for me because I love this book so much that I would like to have given it a higher rating, but the team missed the mark on the cover for this one. They really did. And so for a completely different reason to the others, you should not judge this book by its cover because it is so much better than the cover leads you to believe. And that brings me happiness to say at least that everyone needs to go read this book regardless of the cover. Yay! And so that is my should you judge this book by its cover video. This is a bit of a prototype, a bit of a trial of a video if you guys would like to see another one of these 
with different books now that I've got the hang of it a little bit then please do let me know down in the comment section and I would be more than happy to do one. If you guys do this video yourself please let me know down in the comments or tag me on Twitter and Instagram. I would absolutely love to see you guys do this video and I just think it's a fun one and I think it's unique. I haven't seen anyone else do it but could be wrong. YouTube is a very big place so who knows. Thank you guys very much for watching this video especially if you made it this far. If you did make it this far why not hit that big red subscribe button down below because there is no shortage of bookish content here and you can clearly stand my voice long enough to make it this long so why not just subscribe? That could be fun. I hope that you guys have an absolutely fantastic week. I hope that you enjoy every single book that you are reading and I will see you on Friday for my next video. Bye guys!